Now then YouTube, I'm Toffman and welcome back to some more Thorncraft 5. It's a complete guide to Thorncraft 5 and I must apologise straight off the bat. My voice will be a little bit croaky because I am still ill at the moment. So, without further ado then, what we're going to get on with today is the tab Alchemy on the left hand side. Of course, I'm using the cheat in uh, Thormonomicon which shows absolutely everything that's available and you won't see something like this as soon as you've uh, you've done this. You will have to do all of the research and stuff yourself to be able to get to this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this basic alchemy, bubble and boil. And basically this just tells you how to do alchemy within Thormcraft. You can get a cauldron by uh, making, uh, not a cauldron, uh, hang on a minute, yeah, you can get a cauldron by making, what was it? I think it's just a cauldron, oh, it's a crucible. Ah, you know what, I don't know, if my head wasn't screwed on. You make a cauldron the normal way with seven bits of iron, you can smack that with an iron capped wooden wand to get your most basic uh, crucible. Now inside the crucible you can do various different things and this is the type of screen that you will see for something that you'll be able to do or a recipe that you can make within the crucible. So you can see here the picture of the crucible and then there's a whole load of stuff inside there and there is a particular, um, uh, particular item. Now what this basically means guys is everything has an, uh, uh, um, an aspect. Every single item in the game has aspects and these ha these are certain things that are imbued within the item you chuck them into a crucible and the aspects will dissolve into the water and then become this now when you've got enough of something to make a recipe in this case a balanced shard once you've got all of these little bits and bobs you just chuck whatever the catalyst is on top of all of these aspects so you can't really see it because it's like uh, constantly changing because these are changing as well but if we have a look um, that's how you make Salis Mundus, by the way, guys. You get a balanced shard and you smelt it up. That's what this little sign is in the background. And you've got a Salis Mundus. Now, um, what, say, what it's saying here, what it's going on with, is all of the little different bits and bobs that you will need going forward. So, as you can see, uh, the Crucible... Uh, I'll show you in a second, actually, how you actually use the Crucible. Um, and we'll go through that, rather than reading all that, because it'll take forever. So, what you can also make are Essentia filters, and these are like little items that you can make within bigger items, within bigger crafting recipes. You need silverwood planks and two gold ingots with 25 aqua and auto, that's how you get Essentia filters. There is a Morphic Resonator, now you remember in the last few episodes, I did mention that these things um, were, will be part of a later episode. Well, then now. <laughs> Morphic resonators, you need some glass panes, a tainted shard in the middle with two brass plates on either side with 75 auto and peditio. And that is how you make a Morphic resonator. So, let's go into a little bit on how you make the crucible. Well, we're going to get uh, the cauldron first. There we go. We're going to get a wand. Now, for the sake of this video, we're just going to go ahead and use one of these. Now, ooh, the tainted node is actually becoming a problem right here. You can see it's actually making, uh, well, it's a sinister node. It's actually making it, turning the ground into something that we don't want it to turn into. So, let's go over here. Now, what you will need to do is place the cauldron there. Now, there is one of a few things that you can do now. Firstly, you will want a bucket of water. And you can fill up the cauldron with that. Oops, I haven't actually changed it into a into a, uh, a thingy. There we go. You just right click it with your wand and that will turn into a crucible. The crucible you can then fill up with water. And you will need to fill it up with water. That is, you know, you can't do any alchemy without water being there in the first place. But you can see it's doing absolutely nothing. Now it needs to boil. The water actually needs to boil. And there's a few ways that you can do this. The age old recipe of the netherrack and a flint and steel will be able to do it and you'll see after a little while some bubbles will start to appear on the top of the cauldron wait for it there we are there are the bubbles now not only can you do it with netherrack but you can also do it with an item that I'm just about to show you which is nitor now nitor we're just gonna go and grab a bog standard nitor if we can find one there we go and they can also do it with that. And here you go. 
you can see it now, now guys that it's now bubbling all because of the night ore that's underneath it and obviously that's a lot safer than using netherrack because that's flames or you can also put lava underneath it and that will also do the same job however the most the best way of doing it is to get the night ore and that's how you make the crucible so i'm going to show you something guys uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a balanced shard. And the, the easiest way of doing it is certainly not the most efficient way of doing it, but the easiest way of doing it is to get six of each type, well, one of each type of the six shards, and then throw them in. Like that, like that, like that, and like that. That's exactly what we need. Once I do this, which is the catalyst, it will give me back a balanced shard. Now be careful, look, you can see there is five left over, and that's um, an aspect called vitreous. Um, basically, it's not being used within the recipe. And what happens to this is it will eventually turn into flux and then disappear into the atmosphere. So you will have to keep in mind that this will do bad things to, well, what you can see on the top left-hand side there. This will definitely do bad things. There is better ways of doing alchemy, which I will show you um, actually within the alchemy tab. But... That is your very most basic alchemy. So, also, another thing to look at are glass files. These are little containers that you can make with clay, and three glass doesn't require any aspects, but they're capable of holding all manner of liquids and substances. But the most important use to a thaumaturge is their ability to hold essentia. Now, essentia doesn't work like a normal fluid. It doesn't work like normal liquid. You can't just bucket essentia and take that around the place. This is the only way that you can do it. Get some glass files and uh, make them, and then you can be able to store Essentia inside the glass files. Going down the list now, guys, I'm going to go down here to metal, uh, Magical Metallurgy. And you will want to be able to get into this relatively soon, because Thormium is something that's used in quite a lot of recipes. Um, metals have proven to be quite easy to manipulate via thaumaturgical princi principles. Your first experiments have led you to the discovery of thaumium. Thaumium is the result of infusing base metals with raw magical energy. The result is a metal harder than iron, with the ability to accept enchantments beyond that of which iron is normally capable of. A metal such as this has many applications in the crafting of more advanced thaumaturgical devices. It can also be used to craft tools, arms and armour in a crafting table using the normal recipes. While thormium has many useful features, some mundane metals are better suited to certain tasks. Brass is a sturdy, low friction metal perfectly suited to craft intricate me mechanical devices. Unfortunately, it's not always possible to get hold of it due to the morphic properties of the universe you may find yourself in. Fortunately, you've found an alchemical method of crafting this useful metal. So not only can you create thormium by chucking in iron with two ardor and two terra, but you can also chuck an iron in with one aqua and one potentia, and you've got yourself alchemical brass. And that is something that you will need within certain recipes, especially within the machines that come with it. Also, some of these things that you'll need, brass gears, which are four alchemical brass around an iron, and then the brass plates, which are three alchemical brass across there, and you will get two of the brass plates. Thormium also has gears and thormium plates now, four thormium ingots around an iron ingot and three thormium ingots in the same kind of uh, formation as the brass ones get you the thormium plates and here we have all of the different weapons and tools that you can get the thormium axe the thormium sword the thormium pickaxe the thormium shovel the thormium hoe the thormium helm which is the armor the thormium chest plate leggings and boots and uh, you can wear all of those and use all of those like normal tools. So, moving on from there, we go to Metal Transmutation. And this is pretty useful, actually, guys. You've discovered a way to multiply metals by steeping nuggets of that metal in metallum and other aspects. So, basically, two metallum and one vitium inside the crucible, and using an iron nugget as a catalyst will get you three iron nuggets back, which isn't too bad, guys. One golden nugget in with desiderium, which is basically lucrum from the old one. Um, two metallum and one vitium will get you three golden nuggets back for the one that you've used to be able to craft it. And that is metal transmutation. Other mods, when they're added in, such as industrial craft or something like that, they're adding copper and tin, they will get added to the metal transmutation. I'm pretty sure that they do, and they get their own little bit and bob that's around there. But anyways, 
Metal purification on the other side here is something worthy to know of. You can get native clusters, uh, rare concentrations of metals in its purest form. You've discovered a way to purify and concentrate normal ore into a native cluster. When smelted, these clusters produce twice the normal amount of ingots. It's a very good way of doubling your ore very, very soon within your Let's Play. So. One metallum and one ardor along with the iron ore will give you a native iron cluster. You then smelt that, you will get two iron ingots back for that. Same goes for gold and same goes for cinnabar. So, moving on onto this, no, onto this side first, I'll do this side first, um, is magic tallow. Magic tallow can be uh, is something that you can craft with one ignis and one rotten flesh. And there's certain things that you can do with this. You can create candles, some white tallow candles, and what these can help you do is stabilize your infusion setup when you get later on, or you could literally just pl uh, place it anywhere and it acts like a torch. Um, but they also have a bigger property in the fact that they can stabilize infusion setups, but we'll get to infusion setups later on in this series. So here we are, magic tallow. By processing and heating flesh in a crucible, you can create a mystical tallow suited for many arcane uses. This tallow can be used to craft candles, and it's also possible to craft different coloured candles by combining a candle with a dye in the arcane workbench. So not only can you get white tallow candles, but you can get any colour candle across the spectrum. Moving on down here, we've got... I can't really see what that says. Hang on a second... Oh, that's a bit too small. There we go. Now I should be able to see that. There we go. Alchemical duplication. You can never have too much of a good thing. Inside here, you can put a gunpowder with four ignis, four pedetio, and get two gunpowder back. And there's other bits and bobs that you can do exactly the same with. Slime balls is one of them. Clay is another. Glowstone. And ink sacks are something that you can double. Now, I'm not sure if it shows all of them there, but I'm pretty sure that... Uh, um, I mean, I've never used alchemical duplication in the past. I have to say I've never used it in the past. But it can be of use to some people, especially one aqua and two terra being really easy to get hold of and the clay can give you double the amount of clay back. That's actually not bad at all. So, the next thing down here, um, once you've unlocked alchemical duplication, you can get the Everfull Urn. Very strange, the fact that you can get... Um, the Everfull Urn after Alchemical Duplication, given the fact that, basically, I, I don't get why this comes off that. But anyways, oh, Alchemical Duplication, I suppose it could do. Okay, Everfull Urn. This is one a throwback item from way back in Thorncraft 2, I believe, that the Everfull Urn was last seen. A small fountain of pure water always flows from the top of this urn, making it a perfect water source to fill your buckets, bottles, and other liquid containers. It will also automatically replenish any liquid containers within two blocks of it if they accept water from the top. This is perfect for automatically refilling crucibles but has many other uses as well. Every bucket of full water created costs one aqua vis which is drawn from the aura. So a couple of things to note of the changes between the Everfull Urn of Thorncraft 2 and this Everfull Urn. The Everfull Urn of Thorncraft 2 gave you um, water for free. It basically just an, uh, it acted like an endless water source, which is exactly what this one does. Two water buckets, a hardened clay, water shard, and a salus mundus with 16 aqua, 8 fabrico, and 8 terra. It's negligible instability, so it's really easy to craft. However, this time, it also has an added bonus in the fact that it can replenish any liquid containers within two blocks of it. That is something that we never had in the past. Certainly very, very useful for crucibles. But when you take into account uh, other mods as well, say for example, Batania has the, uh, the, oh, what do you call it? The, 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 oh, I can't remember what you call it, guys. That little stand that you can chuck all your petals into. Imagine this being right next to it and it just filling it up all the time without having to you uh, without having you to keep filling it up. <clears throat> now it does cost one aquavis every time there is a new bucket of water created, so just keep that in mind. So that is going to be it for the end of this part of the episode, guys. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please go ahead and leave a like, and don't forget anything that you need to know will be in timestamps underneath in the description of this video. Very, very important. So, next episode we'll come back and we'll get into some of this stuff. 
that's all the way over here and then we'll start moving towards the Essentia tubes and all of this different stuff that you can see on the right hand side here. So until next time guys, I've been the Toffman, thank you very much for watching and as always, stay safe.